ulterior motive. I want to get a drink of whiskey. Authority zero. Jason DeVore from Authority Zero. Hi everybody. Very, very excited. So, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the new album that just came out. So okay. the tipping point, yes. right? So you guys, it's a very exciting year for Authority Zero. It is. It it's, is. It's very, so far, so it really has been exciting. It's been a pretty full year as early on as it is. Awesome. So you guys just got back from Europe, correct? Yeah. Okay, so um, I don't know how many times you've been over there, but what's the skate punk scene like there? I mean, were you surprised? Were you disappointed? No, it's exciting, man. It's a, it's really alive and well over there, and that's one of the cool things you'll hear a lot of bands say that are of this particular type of genre or whatever. Is that and that's why you see a lot of them go over there so often is because the passion for it, and the love for it, just seems like it's never never died at all. It's like people, you know, we got over there probably for the first time. I think about three years ago, finally, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the kids were coming up saying, you know. We thank you guys so much for coming over here. It's like 10 years ago was when I heard your first album. Wow. And I'm like, well, thanks for sticking around, you know, because usually you lose interest at that point in time. But kids were coming out like it was, you know, it was like 10 years earlier and just going off. It was fun. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, speaking of the skate punk scene, you know, lately, nowadays, you know, you're seeing less and less bands come out of skate punk. And Excuse us. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. Well, they don't care about us. <laughs> Dead body. Um, you, know, you, you see a less and less bands coming out. You know, Are there any bands that you specifically have seen that you think people should watch out for coming up and kind of, you know, re, re, I guess regenerating the skate punk scene? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot that you, people may have already heard of them. They've already kind of been breaking some ground and stuff, but there's a band called Poor Habit out of uh, Los Angeles, California. Some good friends of ours that have been working really hard. Um, you know, there's... Uh, band from back home called the Neptune Hero. They're, they're a really great bunch of guys and they, they grew up kind of listening to our band as well. And I've been playing for quite some time now. Um, Flatliners, Will Up Scream, these guys have been around for some time as well, but if anybody's not heard of them, check them out. They're definitely going to lots of other bands. Because those are the bands to me that are coming up and kind of carrying the torch and, you know, probably hopefully going to be the next Bad Religions, the, you know, that type of uh, thing of our generation. Very cool, very cool. So The Tipping Point, now what is your favorite song on The Tipping Point to perform? Uh, I think my favorite one is The Tipping Point, the title really? track on it, yeah. And I think the reason for that is because it was a track that almost didn't make the album as, as much as, as the album track. Um, wow. We recorded the music for it without a click or anything, just like pretty, pretty much had no rhyme or reason to it and it was nearing the end of the recording session <clears throat> and I was like, you know what, I'm just out of ideas or I don't want to repeat myself or whatever. I'm like, let's come back to this at maybe another point in time. And so we went on tour and during that tour, was supposed to be writing and writing a, writing along to it, but I just got in tour mode and was just you know having fun or whatever. So right. um, it came time to where we circled around the states and came back to California, where we had a day off to where I was going to jump in the studio and record the vocals for it. And I still had nothing written, you know. Yeah. So that day before, I was like, I should probably rack my brain a little bit and you know wrap my, my mind around this whole thing. So I did. Went in the studio the next day with camera met back, met back up. Uh, the music was all done and just pretty much wrote to what was already there and. Came out to me to be one of my favorite tracks on the entire album. It was so spontaneous. There was no click to it. It was such a raw type of uh, energy and, and moment with the writing of it that I didn't have a lot of time to be thought through so much. Right. right. And it's just—it's uh, a really intense song live. I think, and I think it comes across that way. Well, I'm excited to see it. Well, thanks. Yeah, yeah. So another question for you. Uh, obviously, Authority Zero has gone through a lot of changes mm -hmm. in the past couple of years. Um, yeah. How how you know how is the new chemistry? How do you how are you enjoying it? How is how are they enjoying it? Everyone's really enjoying it a lot, you know, it's like, like I've always said, you know, if, if I could have the four of us, you know, that originally started with this group, you know, as of like 97, um, I'm sure we all would. Obviously life, life changes and things, you know, priorities come into play with getting older and kids and families and, you know, just things like that. So, I mean, um, everything's completely understandable with people having to move on their lives in different ways. And uh, the cool thing right now what we have going for us is, you know, each person has kind of set their life up in a weird way to do this for a living, you know, right. like uh, Brandon, he's, uh, when he joined the band, he pretty much said, he's like, you know, I live out of my one room apartment kind of thing, he's like, I plan on at some point in my life doing this and not having to have a lot of financial obligation and, and things of this nature, and just lives and breathes the guitar, you know, really, and, um, you know, I gave him Sean, you know, uh, Sean Sellers, a drummer, he's just, that's all he does, you know, he's right. drums, and he's really excited about 
uh, about playing with us and good riddance and just music in general. He's never, you would think maybe at some point now in his life he'd be kind of jaded from doing it for so many years, you know. Yeah. But every day he's just always talking about how inspired he is and how excited he is with this team of people. Uh, you know, Mike on bass. Mike's been a part of our family uh, for quite a few years now. Uh, and so it's just kind of one of those natural transitions with him. And, you know, he's a front man in his own band. So right. now him and I get the chance to sing side by side. It's a lot of fun with like a lot of the harmonies and stuff that's that we've awesome. done on prior records you know, that we're now able to bring to life uh, a little bit with the four, the four of us really connecting on stage and everything. So yeah. I think it's going to show. I think it's a scene too. Awesome. So another question, I guess, two questions, but kind of piggybacking off of that. Um, you know, you mentioned, you know, doing this for a living. So what point, at what point, you know, what was the, the I guess the tipping point, we'll use a, sure. for lack of a better word, um, where you decided that this is what I'm going to do for a living? What, you know, what pushed you into that? Because I feel like a lot of musicians have that moment, that one defining moment. Probably, I mean, I'm thinking realistically when I was like, wow, I'm doing this. I'm actually, I'm not just, you know, playing a couple shows around town. It's, uh, when we started doing a lot of the heavy touring, I think probably 2004, three or four, I think at that point. Uh, then it had already been about like nine, nine years invested into the band and the, and the music, you know. Right. And uh, at that point, I was kind of like, there really was no other option. I don't think I even really thought about it twice. I was like, this is just what I'm doing. It's what I'm going to do. Um, I think you know, I really enjoy it. I love doing it. I don't get, like I said, jaded either by, uh, by a lot of the stuff other than, you know, the the business politics of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you talk about, huh? Yeah, but I mean, just the, the, the traveling, the, the getting to meet new people, the, just the energy of the shows, like it's, which is something that I, I latched on to really strongly. And um, like I've always said, you know, it's like it was either going to be shoot to be a pro skater or snowboarder or, you know, play music and just do something I love uh, wholeheartedly. Right. In my life, so. That's really awesome. I think, you know, it's great to, for, to hear that from you because I think, you know, a lot of young musicians still, you know, they're looking up to you. They want to hear that. You know, you just make the decision and you just go for it and you're able to do it. So yeah. that's really, really cool. Yeah, just follow your heart, follow your dreams, man. Yeah, totally. So some, some I guess, personal, little, we're going to take a little personal here. Okay. Not too personal. But um, so when you guys are on tour, do you have any, like, pre-show rituals that you kind of do or, you know, funny things that you guys would like to share with your fans that you think you know they'd enjoy to hear i wish we had something really cool with it we usually just do like a big hug <laughs> <laughs> like just like a group hug be like let's go have fun and just leave it all on the stage and right. and just get nuts i mean there's nothing really crazy that we do okay. sometimes we have to use the bathroom more than others they get excited <laughs> but that's about it okay so who has the worst hygiene while you're on tour the worst hygiene yeah of all of you because i know there's always one <laughs> yeah i i probably rank up theirs because i i wear the same shorts every every show night you know oh, sean's okay. a close second because he does the same thing but he wears board shorts so his air out a little bit quicker than mine <laughs> I, I got the dickies so they get pretty funky after a while but uh i think as of late I think our tour manager has has won the prize, but uh, Randy. Randy, yeah, he, he's, he's he's new he's new to to the group, and um, he is he's strong. <laughs> he is strong. He's a strong scented man. Poor Randy. It's okay. So, we'll we'll help him out. We'll yeah, let. we'll look him up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess for our final thing here, um, is there any you know advice that you want to give to musicians starting out? I'm sure you've done this tons of times, but you know, I feel like nowadays people are a little afraid to just you know take. Take the, the jump, take the leap, and go in to do what they love. So, mm -hmm. I mean, is there any advice for people who are kind of on that brink right now, um, you know, or maybe starting out just as a new band? Like, what should you do to, you know, ensure that you're having fun and being successful? Well, just know that you are having fun and, you know, really, really keep that as one, one of your key goals, you know, because that's going to lead to everything else, I think. If you keep on trying so hard and it's, it's just it's for the wrong reasons, if it's for the business, for the financial aspect of it, the money, whatever, all that's not going to give you what you need and what, you, what your band's going to hopefully aspire to do. It's going to be that you're having fun, that you're doing it with people that you can connect with, you know, and that's important. You know, people are going to see that uh, from the audience and you're going to feel it on stage and you're just going to be miserable. So make sure you're having a good time doing it. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, keep up to date with all the, the, the new sites with like the Vine and whatever you can do, like Instagram, all that. Even Instagram's old school now, but you know, in, this, in this day and age, there's so many things that kids can do to keep like head of the game or at least up to... Uh, up, you know, keep up with the race, you know what I mean, with, you know, with what's going on with all the other music uh, bands out there. So just, yeah, just, again, do it for the right reasons, do it if it makes you, make sure it makes you happy, and uh, just keep supporting other bands around you, I think, is important too, that, you know, whether it be on the road, whether the local scene, because that's how we kind of came up too, is uh, we'd go out and we'd support every band we could think of that we appreciated and we liked and that was working hard as well. Right. And that, in turn, they're going to help you out, they're going to come and support you, and it's just going to become a, a big uh, community that 
you know, you start just growing together. You know, there's another band called Fayuka, you know, out of uh, Tempe, Arizona. Same kind of concept. Just, you know, they're out there doing it now, touring the United States and probably the world pretty soon as well. So, just love it. Do it. Right. Go for it. Thanks so much, Jason. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hope well. you guys enjoyed, and we'll have this up pretty soon, okay? Take care. Thanks, guys.